Hi, this is Mrs. Krajewski. Today, I'm going to read to you the article, Map of Pangaea Reveals Which Countries Shared Borders 300 Million Years Ago. This article was written on February 13, 2018 by Jana Roos. We're going to start by taking a look at the graphic at the top of the page. You want to identify to the left where the United States is. And you'll see just above it is Canada, just below it is Mexico. But if you look next to Mexico, you'll see the continent of South America. And if you look closer to where the United States is, to the right of it, you're going to see the continent of Africa. And suddenly you realize all the continents and countries are all kind of smushed and tucked together in this one landmass. And this graphic is called Pangea Politico. It was created by Massimo Pietrobon. Trivia nights would have been a lot easier 300 million years ago. In the early Permian epoch, Earth had just one ocean, Pamphylosa, with one massive supercontinent in it, Pangaea. Pangaea is just one of several supercontinents our planet has created over its three and a half billion year history. They form as Earth's tectonic plates slide over its mantle, a process that breaks up land masses and reforms them in new combinations. Which is why geologists just found a chunk of Canada sticking to Australia, or why fossils of Lystrosaurus, a stocky pig-like reptile, are found in the very separate locations of Antarctica, India, and South Africa, and nowhere else. The slow grind of continents is imperceptible to us, but it is happening right this minute. Continents on these plates typically move, I would say, at the rate your fingernails grow, geologist Ross Mitchell tells NPR. Where were we 300 million years ago? Absolutely nowhere. Life on Pangaea was human free, but when we puzzle fit the modern continents back to where they were 300 million years ago, it reveals how your country may have shared its borders with some very different neighbors. This conceptual map called Pangaea Politico was designed by amateur cartographer Massimo Pietrobon to show how different the world would be if Pangaea hadn't broken up some 200 million years ago. Pietrobon's map is more about politics than total geological accuracy. So the scales of some nations aren't perfect, but it shows the approximate location of how our modern world sat atop the old tectonic plate arrangement. This is a bigger view of the Earth with that same graphic on it, showing you all of the continents and countries and where their location would be. It really gives you the idea of what it would be like to have just one ocean and then one huge landmass all put together. That's the concept of Pangaea. With great gusto, Pietrobon describes an ancient world where America and Russia are cozier neighbors. Santa Claus lives in South Korea and Cuba is landlocked. Antarctica and India share the same climate. Pangaea Politico makes a timely and ultimately humanitarian statement about our borders and political feuds. Gathering the world in one piece of land represents a return to the unity of the planet, to the unity of the human race in spite of the divisions that are so convenient for our rulers, writes Pietrobon. Where will we be 250 million years from now? So we've seen the past in Pangaea. What about the future? Current plate movements are slowly reshaping the world once again. Africa is on a collision course with Southern Europe, as is the Australian plate with Southeast Asia. Over the next 250 million years, it's very likely that Earth will form another supercontinent of epic proportions, although experts disagree on exactly how it will come together. Will it be Amasia, Pangaea Proxima, or Novo Pangaea? Whether that landmass is a human-free place, too, is anyone's guess. But if so, let's hope it's for the right reasons and not the wrong ones. On the left, you'll see in the graphic that it shows present day Earth and the locations of the continents. And then an idea of what Amasia would look like 
which is speculation of what it could look like 100 million years into the future.